All right, so this video is gonna be a little bit different than most. It's gonna be a little bit choppy with some awkward transitions. The reason is, after I was done, basically done with this video, about to publish it, we had an ice storm and uh, took out power for a couple days. So it was a chance to actually put this product to a real life situation test. I actually had two of them running, one supporting my aquarium and another supporting the refrigerator. <laughs> And um, so I wanna kind of interject that real life usage into my footage, but I'd already recorded. So like I said, it's gonna be a little bit choppy. There's gonna be a couple of wardrobe changes here. The beard comes and goes, but bear with me. It's gonna be worth it to see how this thing actually performed when I needed it. What's up guys? This is Chris with Half Chrome. Now Jack tends to stick me with some of the oddball items here at Half Chrome. And today is no exception. I've got this guy here. The Flashfish Portable Solar Generator uh, to review. Now we've been offered a bunch of these things over the last couple years and always turned them down. Uh, this time we decided to say yes. Uh, they just seem like such a handy thing to have around. Um, this big battery backup that can do anything, uh, AC power supply uh, for when you're off the grid or for whatever. Um, so we thought this time, well, we'd go ahead and review it. So here it is, and the question I really had is, what is it actually good for? Um, not only what can it power, uh, what are its limitations, but also like, what are the use cases? What am I gonna do with this now that I have it? Am I gonna take it to the beach? Am I gonna take it to drone races? Um, am I gonna use this to save the day uh, when hurricane whatever hits uh, here in Chicago, Illinois? Um, we'll find out. All right, guys, so this is actually perfect timing. Uh, we had a huge ice storm here. Um, I don't know if you can hear the crazy sound of all the ice on the trees there, but um, power went out. So perfect timing for me, I'm gonna be the hero because I've got the Flash Fish battery backup system. Um, I've got two of them actually. So we've got light inside with this thing. We'll be able to fire up the fridge if we need to. If it's out for a couple hours, we'll probably fire up the fridge. So. Let me show you what that looks like. We got people inside. We've got run out of sunlight here. We've got folks doing homework um, using the light from this system. Now, since I'm an engineer, I had to put together uh, this massive spreadsheet uh, to figure out this and do some math. And I did a bunch of testing, as you can see here as well real world to see if the numbers you find on the internet for how much power a uh, refrigerator uses or whatever really hold true and if the, this could actually be useful for those things. So I've got it all summarized for you. I hope after this video you can decide if one of these is right for you. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. Welcome back. Um, now I'm gonna start just by reviewing some of the basic functionality here. I'm not gonna go over everything because you can do that on your own. You can read about this thing. Uh, this is from Flashfish, uh, you know, household name, not really, but um, kind of like, okay, is, are these guys for real? Um, it looks legit. I, I, I checked the bottom, right? There's a lot of battery to have in your house. So I checked the bottom. It's got the CE rating, don't see the UL rating, but CE, good enough. It's good enough for Europe, good enough for me. You know, Europe's kind of like California, right? Uh, super conservative, I would think. So hopefully it's legit and, well, I've had this in my house for a couple weeks. Used it, charged it up, uh, used it to run a computer all day, used it for a variety of things, and I have zero concerns uh, right now about this. So what can it do? So here on the top, we've got a cell phone charger that white circle, because that can do your uh, wireless charging and also uh, right here uh, for your AirPods or something like that, some wireless charging on your hearable earphone item. So tested that out, that works nicely. Um, then I've got a total of six AC power outlets, uh, three uh, USB A's. Um, this one can actually be used to add to, for charging this as well. Um, which I don't think I would tend to do. Uh, and then two USB-Cs as well. And then these other uh, three DC power outputs, 
uh, that use this circular connector. Um, I don't have a lot that that's going to be useful for, but maybe you do. And then, of course, you know, maybe you've got something that only runs off a cigarette lighter. Uh, so we've got that 12 volt output there as well. So lots of options. Uh, charging it, uh, the primary path is right there. So the two things that comes for charging is this uh, car adapter here and then this one for home use uh, here in the US. I've got the two prong and, uh, and we charge on the side with this guy. So takes a few hours, right? This is not like a 1C charging kind of situation. It doesn't take an hour, it takes a few hours. Um, so if you're gonna go use this or plan on using it, I suggest charging it up overnight. And how could I forget uh, one of the coolest features, right? One of the things you wanna do if maybe you're going camping or something, you might run out of light uh, no need to use this to power your light. It's got built-in LED uh, with three power levels. So, um, oh, we've got SOS as well. Okay. So I almost forgot to mention one thing this doesn't come with is anything solar. So despite the name uh, and the indication on the box here, this particular package at least does not come with a solar panel, but um, in theory, you can plug that in um, as an alternative uh, source of, uh, of power to get this things charged up. So that's it real quick for features. Now on to the main thing. Again, what is this actually useful for? Um, can I use this to in my fridge, in my kitchen if I lose power? Uh, can I run a sump pump off it? Can I charge drones? What is it useful for? So let's get into it. Let's start with the category of electronics. And of course, this is half chrome do a lot of stuff with drones. So let's start with drones. So as I look at my spreadsheet here, it looks like a 6S, uh, 1500 milliamp hours. This is a pretty standard, nice, big, beefy uh, racing battery. Uh, I ought to be able to charge that 16 times with this. So good for taking out to the races. I can get plenty of cycles on this thing. So worth considering for that. A Mini 3, um, as another example, 19. Uh, charging cycles off of that. And a Mavic 3 Pro, a little bit bigger battery, seven times seven batteries you could charge on this by my math. Now I did confirm charging the Mini 3 here with no issue, um, and I don't anticipate any problems as well within the parameters of this device. What are those parameters you might ask? So uh, 600 watts is what this is rated for. It can push a little bit higher than that temporarily. Um, but I did have experiences with it kind of just giving up. Not like anything goes up in smoke, but it just kind of gives up, stops trying when you try to pull too much. Um, so 600 watts, what does that mean if you're in the US, you're used to thinking of things, I've got a 15 amp outlet, for example. Um, this is about five or six amps, so not gonna be able to cover everything that you use in your home, like a, a vacuum cleaner, of course. You notice the lights dim when you use the vacuum cleaner sometimes. So um, certain items, Right, so this is only five or six, 15 is pretty standard. Um, and so you're not gonna be able to do everything. So really that's what this is all about, what can you do? The other number to pay attention to is the capacity. So this is 540 watt hours. So those two numbers are the two main inputs to all my math here. And I did again back this up with testing. Okay, so just going through the electronics category a little bit deeper, cell phone 60 times, you could run 60 days on this thing, uh, charging your cell phone all the way dead charge it up again, no problems there. So um, yeah, obviously okay. Uh, desktop computer, now in the electronics category, this is the one thing I don't really recommend uh, you doing. So a desktop can draw um, as much as like 200 watts. Uh, so you're really only gonna get like three hours out of it. So I wouldn't do that. Do go ahead and use your laptop. I tested this out. I ran work all day on this thing only only drained uh, maybe 30, 40% of the battery, something like that, uh, running my laptop um, on an eight hour work day, did great. Everything else, pretty solid. You can even watch TV on a 55 inch TV. I don't know if uh, really that's what you ought to be doing with this in an emergency situation, but maybe you wanna take the TV out in the backyard or something. Uh, you can run a TV off this. Uh, TVs, 55 inch at least, uh, tend to run 60, 90 watts, so you ought to be able to run five or 10 hours uh, uh, on a 55 inch TV. Um, and obviously mileage will vary with other TVs. Important one is a boom box. Now it's kind of hard to figure out. I don't actually have like a nice portable stereo, um, but I think you could get uh, all day at the beach with this thing. Um, a lot of stereos, portable stereos these days come with their own batteries. 
They will run out after several hours. Um, I think you could run all day with this, no problem at all. Uh, with any reasonable size stereo. Okay, so let's move outside of kind of consumer electronics things and go on to a couple other categories. How about heating and cooling? And if the power goes out, can I run an air conditioner or a heater with this? In short, I think the main thing you're gonna wanna do with this is use a fan if you're hot. Um, you would be able to run a small window air conditioner unit, um, but just for a few hours, and is that really helpful uh, for you? I'd much rather run a fan all day all night long with this um, so you can run bigger smaller fans obviously it will go longer with the smaller fan in terms of keeping yourself warm maybe camping like a heating blanket technically 150 watt blanket if it was cranking full blast uh, would run only four hours now i think a blanket would be not likely to run that hot it's going to meter itself back once you warm up you could put another blanket over it so i think most likely again not tested but if you're a heater blanket kind of person might work out for you. All right, so I'm all about projects. So I got the carpentry shop over here. I like to use tools. Is this thing gonna pull enough juice to actually power any tools? The answer is barely, sometimes maybe. Far better use case in this day and age is use it to charge your rechargeable tools. So that's way better. As you can see here, it doesn't do such a good job directly running a miter saw. Uh, kind of conks out and sounds all crazy. Um, so not really there. It can run a little hand jigsaw, but again, uh, far better off using a lower um, power draw just to charge your battery. Now I like to use the bigger uh, lithium batteries so they're 4 amp hours at 18 volt battery so that's 17 watt hours so I should be able to recharge those seven eight times maybe uh, with this uh, flash fish uh, charging station and so this is going to be really useful if you need to do a project so we're looking at building a tree house out in the woods for the kids this year um, don't tell them that uh, they're gonna hold me to it but um, it's going to be really handy. Now, is it going to help us uh, run a saw out there, a bigger saw? Maybe not. For that, we'll bring a generator probably, but you don't want to run a generator all day long just to recharge batteries, right? So what we'll probably do is have one of these charging our um, power tools. And for the big stuff, a table saw maybe, or at least a miter saw, uh, we'll be using a generator, but only when we need it. All right, so how about in the kitchen? Here you might be a little disappointed. A lot of things will not run, right? You've got a thousand watt uh, probably microwave. This only supports 600. Um, an oven, 2300 uh, watts probably. Um, even a coffee maker. So this thing cannot run my Keurig. So don't bring this camping with your Keurig and hope to make coffee with it. Uh, what can it do? Some blenders. I've got a 900 watt blender that this could barely chug along as long as it gets stuck on an ice cube. And then I've got a 450 watt blender. Now why is this important? You'll be the coolest guy camping if you can make frozen drinks. So consider that option. Finally, and most importantly, the refrigerator, right? You lose power for a day. You don't wanna lose all your food. So can this run my refrigerator? Yes, it can. I've got a pretty big uh, 26 about cubic foot refrigerator and it held pretty true to what I could read online about it. Pulled about 70 watts and I think I could run that for about eight hours with this. So. Um, this could keep you going until you could find another solution. For example, 
um, going to get dry ice or hopefully the power comes back on or scaring up a generator from uh, the in-laws that live a half hour away. Whatever it may be, this is probably one of the key use cases. Run your refrigerator, save hundreds of dollars of food. You know, one power outage, this thing could pay for itself uh, for that alone. Uh, you could see in this test, I did get an instantaneous draw, uh, quite a bit higher than the 70. Um, but it, it had no issue with that and uh, and then it kind of settled down to 70 once the uh, compressor turned back on at the back of the fridge. Okay, lighting. As you know, standard light bulb, uh, traditional incandescent 60 watts, going to have no issues with LED bulbs and I've got this built in anyway. In the lowest setting, uh, this thing is pulling um, just 3 watts, so 180 hours. Uh, just to kind of light up your tent or whatever. Um, and then uh, 49 hours uh, at its highest setting. So you're going to get a couple days out of this either way. Um, and of course, you could plug in LED equivalents um, and run for a, a couple days on those as well. Okay, in the bathroom, can you use this? Ladies, do you bring the hair dryer, uh, space ball style, out with you on your camping trip? The answer is no, hair dryers draw an enormous amount of uh, power, about 1500 watts, uh, this can't handle it. A curling iron, you could curl your hair for about four hours with this. I don't know why you'd do that. Um, curling uh, your hair, uh, probably one of your last concerns in emergency or while camping. How about a hot tub? No, 1800 watts about, so nah, no dice there either. All right, now here is a very important category. I put a couple medical items here so that you might need an emergency if you've got someone who uses these items. So first up, nebulizer, 1,000 watts, not gonna cut it. Uh, oxygen concentrator, 460 watts. Will do it, but only for about an hour. Um, so I wouldn't wanna, if I needed oxygen, uh, this will keep me going for an hour. Um, I don't know, uh, probably not the right answer. Probably need a generator back up there. And then a sleep apnea machine, right? Those usually aren't thought of as life savings and you're gonna want obviously eight hours. Um, probably can only run half a night on this thing. So not great in the medical situation. Uh, might get you by an hour in a pinch on something. Another other couple things that matter for me, uh, we've got an aquarium over there. I think I could run this thing for half a day. Uh, just keep my, uh, my pump running. Um, and uh, keep the heaters on. Now, if you've got a saltwater tank with some sensitive fish, um, might, buy, might not be quite enough to keep uh, what you need doing. So check, again, the 600 watt capability and do your own math. Okay, so let me interject one more time here. Putting this system to the test, I did run the two power banks, one on the fish tank, one on the fridge overnight. Did keep the fridge going, woke up in the morning with about 18% power left, if I remember correctly. The fish tank, on the other hand, totally cashed it out. Now, no issues, fish survived. It did keep the tank warm enough, did keep things running long enough, but that heater has to work even harder in the winter time here uh, when the basement was getting colder because the furnaces were out. So, woke up with zero left on that battery bank, but fish survived. Did end up having to run the generator, um, get that thing out, leaking gas and stinky and loudness all over the place, but um, was happy to have these systems. If we had just gotten power back in a few hours, they would have been more than enough to keep me going. So overall, I'd say they did work out. Okay, back to your regularly scheduled programming. I tried this on the sump pump, which is kind of a pain. I probably should have found an easier way to test this, but I'm dumping water in. It just seemed to conk out. So my sump pump should, I mean, a normal half, out, half horsepower yeah, sump pump should be pull about 380 watts, should be able to do it. I didn't have luck with mine. I don't know what really what mine pulls, but um, I wouldn't rely on it. What I would do if I had a backup, uh, battery backup, would just be use this to help maintain uh, the battery backup, basically be a second system, charge the battery backup battery with it. Probably double my lifespan if I was in a real like kind of heavy uh, heavy rainfall situation. Okay guys, so what does this boil down to? I wanna kind of pull this all together and say, where am I gonna use this thing? What is it useful for? And I can think of three main use cases. The first up is going outdoors and doing stuff. So car camping, picnicking, uh, going to the beach. So I can charge my drone seven to 19 times depending on the drone. Uh, boom box, seven hours at least, probably way, way longer. 
uh, phone charging, obviously 60 charges. I can, I can blend for an hour. I think roughly 200 drinks, assuming each one, uh, I can do like three a minute. Um, so, uh, or is that 300 blendings? I don't know, a lot of drinks. Um, so you can be the guy with the blender. Uh, laptop, you can run a day or two on there. Uh, plenty of light, a uh, heated blanket, you could probably go overnight and you can run a, a fan, a small fan for, um, uh, for over 14 hours. So a lot of potential uses uh, for car camping, going to the beach, whatever it may be. Okay, remote projects, bring this thing to charge your uh, lithium batteries for your power tools. This is a huge use case. I will be using it for that, absolutely. And finally, in an emergency, best thing to do is use this on your refrigerator until you can get something else set up. Refrigerators, I think they say usually go about four hours before you're supposed to throw away food. So after a couple hours, throw this on until you can figure something else out. Will I be keeping this? Will I be using it? Will I be giving one to a friend? Absolutely. Um, out for the picnicking, remote work, and uh, emergency refrigerator. That's what I'm gonna use this for. There are other options out there. You can get a full 15 amp system. Uh, you can get twice uh, the amp hours as well. You can get a ton of things. They're gonna cost you more than double the price. So this guy is probably the right compromise for me at least, right? It's half the cost and it can do a lot of important things. Um, and there are much smaller systems that you can do certainly a lot less with. As you can see, there are limitations here and you can just imagine if you get a 200 watt system, how few things you'd be able to run off of it. So this probably 600, 500, I think over 500 uh, watt capability is gonna be uh, where you're gonna wanna be at. So I hope you guys like this review. I'll get it out to you as quick as I can. Um, consider picking one of these up. Uh, this is available on Amazon uh, in the United States. Um, so check it out. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was useful. I'm gonna refer back to this video uh, so I can remember what the heck to do with this thing. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you guys later here on Hacker.